and then it takes us back to the order information page, uh, sorry, order information form, and I can go into tools and then have a look at the workflow. Uh, if I select my workflow status, that will allow me to view uh, the, the status of the transaction as it's flowing through the workflow process. So in the workflow status, um, I can see information about the transaction. You can see that the date it started, when it's expected to complete. So it's actually in the status of being deferred, waiting for the goods to be shipped. So if I select my view diagram, I can see information about the, the actual order itself flowing through the workflow. So once the order is booked, we now want to ship the goods because we know that they're in stock. So I'll come out of this form, which is the sales orders, and then I'll go into the shipping. So if I select shipping, release sales orders, release sales orders. So from the release sales orders form, I'll enter the order number, which is 66393. Click on find, and that's my order. Click on OK. And because I want to ship immediately, I'm just going to remove the requested dates. I'm going to go into the shipping tab, and I'll make sure that everything is as is, just to leave it as is there. Um, on the order management course, we'll go through the details of what happens and how to set up um, shipping information. So in the inventory tab, we want to select the M1 manufacturing, which is um, Seattle Manufacturing Inventory Org, because that's actually where the warehouse from where the goods are going to be coming from. And then we want to pick from the finished goods. So I'll select the finished goods sub-inventory. And once I'm happy with the details, again, during the Order management course will go through the details of um, the setup and the details of these. So if I select concurrent, that will kick off a concurrent program, which will then run through a series of steps, including reports, um, things like the pick sleep and so on will be generated. So if I go to my view requests, just to look at the status of the request, I'll be able to find the status and by refreshing the data to find out the status. So if we look at the pack and sleep report, click on view output, you're able to see the information about the goods that we're sending in the pack and sleep. This will actually be attached to the actual goods that are going out. It's giving us the weight of the item, um, volume and so on and all the transactions is now complete so I've got my pick list generator which has spawned all these different transactions so what I'll do is I'll um, have a look at the transactions itself from within the sales order form just to see what's actually happened at the background. So if I go into my orders return, go into my order organizer, and then do a search for the actual sales order, which is order number 66393. So if I enter the order number, Click on find, and that's giving me the details. So I can see that that's my order number. If I go into the actions, select actions, 
and I want to look at additional order information click on OK and then here if I select deliveries I should be able to see what's happened as far as delivery is concerned you can see that is now delivery status is closed it's been it's been shipped and I've got a, uh, an expected arrival date of the 23rd of August but if I look at my invoices and credit memos that hasn't been done because I haven't actually pushed it across push the transactions across from the uh, workflow into the into um, accounts receivables so let's look at the details you can see now that there are, there are no transaction details showing here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually run the the uh, auto create or the sorry the auto invoice program but I'll kick it up from the workflow background process which spawns the um, auto invoice so that come out of these screens and then run my background process if I run it from inventory and select um, workflow background engine And then I'm going to enter the item type, which is my OM order line. My OM order line. Because that was the details of the uh, workflow that was talked earlier on. So if I select process deferred, yes, because it's still in deferred. And process timeout, no. And then I'm going to submit the request. Submit another request. No. The reason why I selected the OM order line, in order management, you have the lines, flows, and you have the header flow. And the line flow has to complete before the header flows are completed. And the process is normally stuck in the deferred status, waiting for us to run this program. Um, otherwise, I could actually schedule it to run automatically so that it, it will actually just kick off and run any deferred processes. So if I select my view requests, just look at the status of that um, workflow background process that I've just kicked off. So if I, if I didn't select find to find the details, um, it's still this is the workflow background process that's completed and it's now started the auto invoice uh, master program so that's my auto invoice master program which has been kicked off so if I refresh data you can see that that's now running and that's now pending and that will actually kick off the um, auto invoice import into accounts receivable and I should be able to view all the transactions in, in ER. So it's now completed. So I will now go back and search for my order, orders, order organizer. Now if I search for my order number 66393, click on find. Click on Actions, Additional Order Information, and if I go to my Invoices and Credit Memos, I should have the details of my order. So there we are. So we've got the details of my order that's come through, um, and then I can also view the invoice details. The reason why the amount is slightly more is because of taxes. So if I click on the invoice details, that will open up the AR transactions window, and we able, and I'll be able to sort of view the uh, the details of the of the actual transaction itself. There we are. So that's the transactions window in uh, accounts uh, receivable. Uh, you can see the reference to the order number as the reference, and that's the invoice number that is created. The sources order entry, and we can also view the actual invoice. Uh, from here 
So if I click on the icon, you can see that you've got tax 191.89, and that's actually the line details. So if I go into my online invoice, I can actually view the details of the actual invoice itself. You can see the desktop, you can also see the tax each and then the unit price, uh, the sales order number as well. So we've got all the details showing on the actual invoice.